a little bit more about the Midway. I want to talk about the history of the ship. I'm going to read an article to you and I also want to talk about some of the other carriers and their classes that are in our fleet today and some of them that are upcoming in the future. So bear with me. I'm going to read this article to you. Okay, so I'm going to be probably looking away from the camera a little bit simply because I'm reading. This article, this document is it's talking about the USS Midway and the history. So it's basically talking about the museum. Uh, bear with me here, I gotta find it. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> it says, This ship you will be visiting soon is called the USS Midway. The Midway is one of the longest serving aircraft carriers in the United States Navy. Operating from September of 1945, just after World War II ended, until 1992 when she was decommissioned. The USS Midway is now docked in San Diego Bay and has been transformed into one of the most visited ship museums in the world. It is interesting to learn how the Midway got her name. First of all, every Navy ship in the United States has a name beginning with USS, which stands for United States Ship. The Midway was named after an important battle during World War II. This battle, which took place on Midway Island in the Pacific, represented a decisive victory for the Allied forces. That's why the Navy chose Midway for the name of this ship. One of the first things that you'll notice about the Midway when you arrive is the large 41 painted on the side of the ship. The Navy numbers its ships in order as they are built. The very first aircraft carrier ever built in the United States was number one, the USS Langley. It was built in 1922. The Midway was built in 1945 and therefore was number 41. The newest carrier now in use is the USS George W. H. Bush number 77. Now this article is a little bit old because I did some research and the newest um, aircraft carrier that we're going to see now is not the 77 or the Ford Gerald Ford class it's the um, CVN 70 or excuse me CVN 80 which is going to be the Enterprise and they schedule that one to be commissioned somewhere approximately in 2025. Um, there's uh, also the CVN 78, the Gerald R. Ford which is going to start a whole new class of supercarriers and they expect to commission those. Um, there's three of them I think that they're building in that class and they're scheduling those for at least the first one to, to either commission uh, in 2015 or in 2016. Okay, so let me go back to this article. Back to the Midway, right? The next thing you'll notice about the Midway when you drive up close to her is her hot, her size. She is huge. She's 1,001 feet long, which is about the length of three football fields. Now, the Titanic, by comparison, was just over 880 feet in length. The Midway is as high as a 20-story building and she weighs almost 70,000 tons okay now I'm gonna go away from the article for a second 70,000 tons if you think about the Nimitz class aircraft carriers which would include oh gosh I have a list of them here uh, bear with me Nimitz class carriers bear with me here um, the very first one was the, the CVN 78, or excuse me, 68, which is the Nimitz, um, commissioned in 1975. And the 69 was the Eisenhower, 70 was the Carl Vinson. I saw that one when I was in San Diego. It's right across the bay from the Midway, actually. Um, 71 was Theodore Roosevelt, um, 72, Abraham Lincoln. I've been on board and I have some good friends. Uh, hey guys, a <laughs> couple guys that work on the railroad with me, uh, two of them, in fact. Uh, that were on the Abraham Lincoln. And there's a little bit of interesting history there because when we were in the Persian Gulf I was on the USS Sacramento um, back in 1994 I think it was 
and uh, two or three of my friends were on the Abraham Lincoln and we were in the Abraham Lincoln battle group um, during that Western Pacific cruise and we were the Sacramento the ship I was on we were an underway replenishment ship so other ships would pull up next to us and we'd give them fuel well something happened between the Abe Lincoln and us and we had a collision well it was funny not funny that the collision happened but here we go fast forwarding 15 years later and I'm working on a railroad and I got a, a guy another conductor that I was working with I was an engineer and uh, I said hey man what'd you do before the railroad and, oh I was in the Navy and so we get to talking and come to find out he was on the Abe Lincoln at the same time I was on the Sacramento when we had our collision in the Persian Gulf and then they uh, they went to I believe Dubai for repairs and stuff like that so um, that was kind of a neat little bit of history and another friend of mine as well another conductor um, he was also on the Abe Lincoln um, one of them was a machinist mate uh, working down on the engines and uh, the other one was working on the flight deck okay so back to the Nimitz class carriers before I lose my train of thought I just thought I'd give you that little bit of tidbit there um, CVN 73 George Washington um, 74 is the John C. Stennis 75 Harry S. Truman 76 is the Ronald Reagan and 77 George H. W. Bush now all these Nimitz class carriers that I have just mentioned have one thing in common okay you you see where I read just a minute ago about the Midway having a, a weighing um, 70,000 tons well when you look at these these Nimitz class aircraft carriers they're like a hundred thousand tons it's just it blows me away it's crazy crazy I'm just I'm um, I just can't believe it you know the Nimitz class it says right here total full total uh, load displacement 97,000 tons the world's largest aircraft carrier which now um, you get these Ford class and I think they're just a little bit larger and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that in the future here let me go back to the article about the Midway she has two anchors each weighing 20 tons you know okay 20 tons let me put that into comparison for you I work on the railroad okay now if you look at an empty box car okay an empty box car those weigh like 15 tons you know 20 tons sometimes up to 35 tons depending on what your what kind of car you're if it's an empty you know a loaded coal car is like 130 tons so an empty car you know an empty coal car would be about 30 tons that's almost a little bit heavier than what the anchor weighs <laughs> that's crazy it has four propellers each one measuring 18 feet in diameter the Midway can carry up to 80 planes. 80. That is just blows me away. She has three elevators, and they were used to move planes from the flight deck inside um, to inside the ship. Each of these elevators could carry 110,000 pounds. The Midway's crew numbered 4,500 men. In order to keep all those men fed, the Midway had four galleys or kitchens for those of you who don't know Navy terms. So they had four kitchens, four galleys on board this Midway <laughs> and um, they served 13,000 meals a day. Again, I'm still reading this document. Now it says, notice that the USS Midway is referred to by using the pronoun she. This is common for all ships. It goes back to ancient times when sailors named their ships after the women they loved and left behind when they went out to sea. Don't be surprised if you hear a former Midway sailor say something like, The Midway was my favorite ship. She was the greatest. I'll remember her forever. <laughs> okay, let's keep going here. The USS Midway sailed in every ocean in the world and fought in the Vietnam War and in the First Persian Gulf War. Over the years, she was deployed to the North Atlantic Ocean, the Caribbean Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, the Indian Ocean, and the Western Pacific Ocean. Not just a warship, she was also involved in humanitarian efforts. In 1975, okay, a bell's ringing off in my head. 
1975, folks. That's the year I was born, okay? 1975, the Midway was off the coast of Vietnam to help evacuate South Vietnamese people fleeing from those who had taken over their country. And in 1991, when Mount Pinatubo, I hope I said that right, erupted in the Philippines, the Midway delivered emergency supplies and rescued stranded American military personnel. Some say that because of her proud career and service, the Midway is magic. In 1992, after a career that lasted 47 years, the Midway was finally decommissioned. She was getting old and there were newer, more modern ships that had been built to take her place. Okay, and that's kind of what I'm referring to. After the Midway, they had the Forrestal class, then they had the Kitty Hawk class, and then eventually they had the Nimitz class, which is all the current uh, aircraft carriers that you see. The ones I mentioned earlier, you know, the John Paul, or excuse me, the uh, the uh, Abraham Lincoln, the Carl Vinson, um, and then the next new class that's going to replace the Nimitz class is going to be the uh, Gerald R. Ford class. So, she got replaced. During those 47 years of service, over 200,000 men had served on board the Midway. You know, and I'm honored to say that my uncle served on that ship. You know, he's a, I think he did four, five, six years, something like that in the Navy. I'm not sure. I think it was four years or five years. I don't know. But between 60 and 64, four years right there, he was on the Midway. That's just crazy. She had received many awards for outstanding service. Many people wanted to honor the Midway's fine history instead of seeing her rust away and get turned into scrap metal. So, for 12 years... A group of citizens in San Diego met with lawmakers, excuse me, Navy officials, environmentalists, and city officials to make plans for bringing the Midway to San Diego and turning her into a museum. Finally, in June of 2004, the USS Midway Museum opened its doors. And since that day, over 4 million guests, including 15, uh, excuse me, 150,000 students from San Diego and beyond have come on board to explore and learn. We look forward to the day when you arrive with your class to experience the Midway magic. It's a pretty cool little document that I just read. Now, again, like I mentioned, you know, the Navy has these ships and they, they order them. And I'm talking specifically aircraft carriers right now. They, they, they label them by class and usually the first one of this new technology if you will would be the, the first one of the class and starting with the Nimitz you know I'm, I'm not going to read them all but like starting with the Nimitz class uh, I believe that was number 68 CVN nuclear submarine uh, nuclear aircraft carrier um, commissioned in 1975 the Nimitz USS Nimitz so that was the Nimitz class uh, supercarriers. That was the lead ship of, of that whole thing. I think in total there was 12 uh, aircraft carriers that were Nimitz class. And the last one was the CVN-77, the George W. H. W. Bush, um, commissioned in 2009. That was the last one. And then uh, again, the Gerald R. Ford, a new class of supercarriers, um, supposed to commission either next year you know 2015 or 16 CV in 78 and that's the start of the Ford class and currently as far as all the research that I've done I only see three Ford class um, carriers that are showing to to come on board um, now I wanna look at something here real quick bear with me um, the Ford class carriers they basically talk about I gotta go find where that was but they basically talk about what carriers they're replacing. I can't remember where I saw that. But it's, it's just kind of neat. And um, another thing I want to mention is um, the, the crew capacities that these aircraft carriers have. The, in 1942, 
they had the CV9, which was the Essex, the USS Essex, and that was kind of the start of the Essex class of aircraft carriers. Uh, again, they were commissioned, the first one, the Essex, in 1942. Um, the total crew on board that aircraft carrier was 2,600 guys. And back then, 1942, that was huge. A lot of people. Well, let's move forward. 1945, the USS Midway CV-41, that crew went from 2,600, which was on the Essex, up to 4,100 people. That includes the flight wing. Now, you go into the Nimitz class, 1975, uh, CVN-68, USS Nimitz, 3,200 people to operate the ship, 2,500 for the air wing. So you have a total of what? 5,700 people on that ship? That is crazy. That's a lot of men. And now a CVN-78, this is gonna, this is gonna blow your mind right here. The numbers don't go up. I thought they would. You know, newer, bigger, super carriers. Somebody told me that, and I didn't really quite believe it, but one of my friends told me that there was a new aircraft carrier coming out and, and that it would hold 12,000 men. And I thought, yeah, right. But I did some research, and USS um, Gerald R. Ford, CVN-78, the crew capacity actually went down by almost 20% compared to the Nimitz class. Uh, they had a total of 4,700 men, so they dropped like a thousand men. And I was wondering why they did that, you know. So I did a little more research, and the reason that the crew got smaller was because they had the the Ford class aircraft carriers have a lot more uh, automation, automatic stuff, you know, a lot more computerized, and a lot. So it cut a lot of jobs. Um, now let me talk about aircraft carrier museums. The, there's one in Alameda, California, um, USS Hornet, CV-12. There's one in New York City, the USS Inter Intrepid, CV-11. Um, Corpus Christi, Texas, USS Lexington, CV-16. And obviously San Diego, California, you have the USS Midway, CV-41. And Charleston, South Carolina, the USS Yorktown, CV-10. Now. That's just carriers. If you want to talk battleship, uh, uh, since I have it right here in front of me, um, battleship museums um, in Mobile, Alabama, the USS Alabama BB60. That's battleship 60. Um, San Pedro, California, USS Iowa BB61. Um, Massachusetts, Fall River, Massachusetts, um, the USS Massachusetts BB59, and then Pearl Harbor, the Missouri's there in Hawaii. Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, USS Missouri, BB-63. Um, the Camden, New Jersey, the USS New Jersey, BB-62. Um, Wilmington, North Carolina, the USS North Carolina, BB-55. La Porte, Texas, the USS Texas, BB-35. And there's one more, the uh, Maritime Center, Norfolk, Virginia, USS Wisconsin, BB-64. So I just thought that I'd throw those out there in case you want to see uh, a museum ship, kind of like what this name, what this uh, Midway was. So, gosh, I'm so excited, you know. The Navy, looking back, that was some of the best times of my life. I got to see so much, and uh, I've been on board... A few of these ships that I had mentioned um, and and again it was a huge honor for me to not only go on this tour and I don't know if the video that I shot justifies the honor that I have in my heart you know seeing this ship because of all the stuff you know and you look at the history the Navy history of what this ship did it just it just blows me away but I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching this video. I know it was a bit long, but I wanted to include a lot of information. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope you found some good useful information on it. And as always, please feel free to comment on this video, like the video, thumbs up, share this video. Feel free to subscribe to my channel also if you like the content that you see on my channel. And as always, have a beautiful day. Now get your butts over there to San Diego.
right there on the San Diego Bay and check out the USS Midway. Now, one more thing before I go, and I know you're probably like, shut up, dude. <laughs> one more thing. The pricing, I think I paid like 18 bucks, and if you're active military, I think it's like 13. Even though my, um, my, uh, I think my daughter was with me, you could probably see her in the video too. Um, I think she was like six or eight bucks. So, anyway, <laughs> thought I'd throw that in there. Have a beautiful day, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.